You know, no disrespect to the good players that got into the uh, Football Hall of Fame as part of the 2024 class. I basically think this guy has been shunned for the only reason why he only had several key seasons with the Cardinals where he made the playoffs and, you know, were, were contenders. But I think for durability and for impact on the game, he more than deserves uh, a look as a, what do you call it, a veteran inductee. Uh, 16 campaigns uh, or more with the Cardinals. Did play one season with the Redskins as a backup to Joe Theismann. But this is one of my very favorite players. And as an NFC East team, I have uh, great respect for him uh, with the Cardinals because the Cowboys always had trouble with him when he used to play Dallas. Of course, we have to talk with the great Jim Hart. 6 one two fifteen. Uh, the, the product out of Niles West in Skokie, Illinois, born April 29th, 44, in Evanston, Illinois. Uh, he played for the Cardinals from 66 to 83 and the Redskins in 84. Now, Ray is just outside Chicago for the first early years of his life. He moved when his father died when he was seven. His mother remarried and her stepfather encouraged him to play sports. He started playing football as quarterback at Niles. He also lettered in basketball for three years and played baseball. Now, when he received a football scholarship to play for Southern Illinois, Salukas, from 62 to 65, he was a, a very, very uh, durable and strong player. After no team picked him in the 66 NFL draft, Hart's former coach, Don Schroyer, invited him for a try with the Cardinals. He impressed the team so much, uh, he was signed soon after. Now, he's three years in Southern Illinois. He put up some... Uh, uh, dynamite uh, numbers uh, with uh, 1,041 yards and 63, 14 touchdowns, 64, 13 touchdowns, uh, 1,594 yards, and 65, <coughs> seven touchdowns. But his biggest thing was the interception because he was, uh, what do you call, picking high-risk plays for a big reward. Now, uh, hard played in relief of Terry Nofziger in the final game of the 66 season. On December 17 for the Cardinals, who had lost Charlie Johnson, who was fulfilling an ROTC commitment. And he completed 4 of 11 passes for 21-9 yards in a 38-10 loss to Cleveland. Now, by 1967, Hart started all 14 games, going 6-7 and seven and one by throwing for 3,008 yards with 19 touchdowns and that big bugaboo with 30 interceptions on a 48.4 completion percentage. Bodie's yards and interceptions would prove to be career highs. The following year, he and his team improved slightly with him going 8-3-1 in the 12 games he started, with Johnson uh, beginning two contests. Throwing for 2,059 yards with 15 TDs to 18 interceptions on a 44.3 completion percentage. Now, he split time with Johnson for the 69th season, playing in nine games while starting five, with Johnson starting the other uh, nine. He went 2-3 with 1,086 yards for 6 TDs and 12 interceptions on a 49.7 completion percentage, although the team won just 4 games for the first time since 62. Now, those early career teams were mediocre at best. They were 31, 33, and 5 these first 7 years. But the hire of uh, Eric Coriel, leader Don Coriel in 73, turned things around. From 74 to 76, he guided the Cardinals to 3 straight, 10-plus win seasons, along with back-to-back -back NFC East crowns in 74 <coughs> and 75, leading the cardiac cards to 10-game winning drives during that three-year span, of course, outlasting Washington, the Giants, and Dallas for the division. The Cardinals played their first playoff game in 26 years with the matchup in Minnesota December 21st, 74, with Hart leading the Cardinals to the first score of the game on a pass from 13 yards to Earl Thomas in the second quarter. Although they were tied at halftime, it did not last, as the Vikings rolled to a 30-14 victory on 23 points in the second half. Hart would throw 18-40 for 200 yards with a touchdown and an interception while being sacked twice. For the matchup in the 75 playoffs, they faced the Rams. Hart's early struggles would prove to doom the Cardinals as he threw two interceptions that would each be returned for touchdowns, and the Rams would lead 28-9 at halftime. A nascent run in the second half made the final score 35-23, in favor of L.A. Hart was 22 uh, for 41 for 291 yards while throwing three picks while being sacked twice. In 76, he threw for a career-high completion percentage of 56.2, complementing that with 2,946 yards for 18 touchdowns and 13 interceptions, with the team going 10-4, becoming the only NFC team to ever miss the playoffs 
after winning the 10 games in a 14 game season, due to losing twice to the 10 of 4 Washington Redskins. The 77 season proved the doom on the mediocrity for Hart and the Cardinals. They were 7 and 3 with just four games to play and a narrow lead for a potential wildcard spot in the postseason. However, a 55 14 drubbing at home to the Dolphins proved to be the harbinger of a four game losing streak that doomed the team to a 7 7 record and out of the postseason. Coriel would eventually leave the team after the season. Hart was aimed at a Pro Bowl despite this disappointment, having thrown for 2,542 yards with 13 TDs and 20 interceptions with a 52.4% completion percentage. It would be the last season where the Cardinals had a 500 better year with Hart at the helm. In the next four seasons, Hart would start in 52 to 64 games played and win 17 35 as a starter, throwing a combined 52 touchdowns, 72 interceptions for nearly 10,000 yards and a 500. Uh, 52.3 completion percentage, while being sacked 100 times. Hart had no no offensive line. He would be sacked 243 times in total for his career. Now for 82, Neil Nobacks was positioned as quarterback for the future of the Cardinals, and Hart made mop-up appearances in four games that year, throwing one TD with 200 yards passing in 19 of 33 combined. Hart did not play with the Cardinals uh, when he made it to the playoffs. 83 was Hart's last season with the squad, after Lomax was taken out of the midst of the season opening loss, whereupon Hart threw 11 for 20 for 141 yards, Hart would be the starter for three of the next four games. His final start at QB was on October 2nd against the Chiefs. He would throw 5 or 13 for 33 and three picks before taking out for Rusty Leash. Hart was signed by the Redskins to back up Joe Theismann for the 84 campaign, playing little in that season before retiring in the offseason. However, Hart did make it a one foot note in history as he, his appearance in the October 17 game was his 200 appearance in a quarterback position, making him the 10 quarterback to ever do so. In his career, he was also selected to the Pro Bowl four times. In the 77 Pro Bowl, he threw five picks, the most in Pro Bowl history. He won 87 88 5 in his career, sat 243 times, but played in 201 games. As of 2021, he was 25th in passing, 29 victories, 34th in completions, and 32nd in passing touchdowns, though he's, he's a 10th in passes interception, intercepted, including a 30 interception season in 67. The sixth player in history to achieve this dubious benchmark, 73rd in being sack and 161st in passer rating. He has the most passing attempts, completions, yards, touchdowns, interceptions, both career and single season, wins and losses as a Cardinal. Now, he was named in the NFC Player of the Year by UPI and all NFC and second team All Pro for 74. He was eventually inducted in the Missouri Sports Hall of Fame in 98 for his contribution to the sport of football. Again, uh, 74, 75, 76, and 7, four time Pro Bowler in those campaigns 10 and 4, 11 and 3, 10 and 4, and 7 and 7. That was the key. But to beat out Washington, Dallas, and the Giants was just, uh, just amazing. Where, uh, you know, especially the 74 campaign where Dallas did not make the playoffs. Now, in 83, Hart uh, got uh, big news when he and teammate Dan Deardorff opened up Deardorff and Hart's Steakhouse. That steakhouse closed in 2013 after 30 years of operation. Now, he eventually became a broadcaster. He uh, did games on WGN with Dick Butkus after his retirement until 89. Now, in 89 as well, he became the athletic director for the Southern Illinois uh, University at Carbondale, serving until a chancellor or a changeover forced him out in 1999. Now, Hart has been married to his beautiful wife, his college sweetheart, and he has three children and four grandchildren and some nieces and nephews. He recurrently resides in Naples, Florida, and often participates in charity golf tournaments. Now, the suggestion that Jim Hart should not be in the Hall of Fame, it's tough to do because let's look at the rough stats. 5,076 passing attempts, 2,500 completions, 51%. Interception, the TD ratio, again, doesn't tell the whole story. 209 to 247, but 35, 4,000 passing yards. But get this. Second team All-Pro in 74, four-time Pro Bowler, 74 to 77 inclusive. UPI NFC Offensive Player of the Year, 74 even with Roger Staubach in the association. The Wizard White NFL Man of the Year in 75. And, of course, the Arizona Cardinals Ring of Honor. So I basically believe for durability and for dedication and for longevity, the seam in a Washington Redskin uniform was kind of bizarre. 
Even Joe Theismann said that. I think Jim Hart is more than deserving of the Hall of Fame. Because if you look at a top 10 quarterback of the mid-1970s, Jim Hart was there. And that should be enough to get you in because, uh, you know, uh, the offensive line let him down. He didn't have the greatest team. But every time a Cardinal game came on, and I saw more games with Jim Hart on the uh, simulcast broadcast on CBS, uh, CBC French. And I became a big fan of Jim Hart because he was always doing something. He was working hard. And you, you know something? Patrick Mahomes uh, has that same style, the hard work ethic. Uh, Mahomes obviously has more talent because, you know, a uh, faster player, different type player. But Jim Hart, with a better offense and a better offensive line, who knows what he could be done. He could have got the Joe Flacco style or, you know, Aaron Rodgers. Jim Hart was a throwback because he took all the burden of the Cardinals on his, his back. And if he could have found somebody better than him, they would have had him. 16 years, 17 years with a, with a franchise. It's just a walk-on. I mean, that's just amazing. So that's a legend of Jim Hart. If you like what you're doing here with our NFL podcast, let us know with a like, comment, subscribe, or share. Bye.